motorsport has always been in my family and through like my grandparents and my mum and my dad and through my dad's family and my mum's family both sides of it were heavily in motorsport so for me at a young age you see pictures on the wall and no matter what you're, you're nearly always looking up to those things like those things you, you nearly aspire to be You know, I don't want to fail. I don't want to like let my family down. Not so much let them down. I'm sure I'm like making them proud and doing things like this. But I'm I'm so committed to this racing gig, and I want it so bad. And, oh, this, I'm so hungry for success in this in this industry that I'm scared of not making it. And other than that, I'm not scared of hurting myself. I'm not scared of putting my life on the line or anything like that. Like I want this, and I'm willing to do anything for it. One of the two high on is that Max Haas is the next big question. Still believe my biggest success is to come. My name is Max Hart, I'm a racing driver and I'm currently racing in the 2021 TCR UK Championship. Situation, Max Hart, uh, super fast, Northern Irishman. Yeah, that's it. Look, the championship's bigger and better than it probably ever was. And it's proper, proper tip-top racing. And again, Max Hart, his car just seems that more edgy, more manoeuvrable heading into turn two. And me now, Max Hart, this is the closest he's ever been. I'm up. Jamie's so, Jamie's Hello. Yeah. <laughs> My name's Max. I'm a racing driver. And this is day in the life of some badass driving. <laughs> so what's today going to look like anyway? I think if the weather's good, yeah. we'll need good weather so we can we can push on yeah. to to learn as much as we can. Um, yeah, it's just going to be about learning. So so what's the, like the run of the day? What's the schedule? Uh, I have no clue. You have no clue. Just no find clue. out as you go along. I think we're we're out at twelve and it's four twenty-five minute sessions. So however they do that, there's some other cars here as well. So I presume they'll be in between us. Yeah, I suppose on a, on a Saturday everything's a lot more relaxed. You don't have the pressure of a race, I suppose. But there is some certain pressures, as in you want to get yourself up to speed as quick as you can, and then you want to try be. Not necessarily the fastest, but you want to you want to know that you're quick because it's important. I think in this game to have confidence going into your race, and I think that plays a, a big role for it. I'll be looking to get within like half a second of, of what I want to achieve on for the pole time, or thereabouts. Like as close as you can, the better. But on the day, you just perform that bit better. So I think the ambitions of a Saturday are to just dial myself in. If it's a new track, I need, you've got a lot to learn then, so you've got to to really take in as much as you can. Fabulous. Thank you. Thanks a lot. See you later. So this one's for you, is it? That's uh, for me, yeah. Cheers. Dining on just basically it just lets everyone know that you're there <laughs> and that you're going to race on the day. In case, let's say, you had a really bad crash or whatever on the Saturday, then you obviously you wouldn't sign on because your car wouldn't be ready, so then they would know that you're not there. No, what's that? Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's oh. all right. No, it's, uh, that's just, is that? That's if you're under 18, is it? Yeah, yeah that, I think so. Uh, yeah, I think it is, yeah. So I'll just take this. All right, Can I all take right. one of these? You need, yeah, take two of those. For the car, lovely. Yeah. And there's, uh, there's your wristband for the test only. Fabulous. And so, brief in at 10 30. Okay, thank okay. you. Have a look. See you then. Yeah, so you s just sign that you're agreeing to all the track rules and you know what everything's going on, what everything means, like basically. Yeah. It's on 12. Yeah, we just heard. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're not at 12. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. That might be good. Yeah. I want you to feed. So my weekends normally start the week before. So from the Monday on, and it normally starts with a social media post. Should get a picture then so I can post on social media. I think that's a big thing that's in racing nowadays where social media plays a big part. So I'll normally put up a race week post letting everyone know that my race is going to be on this weekend. This is for the track walk. I've done one already. I'm going to go with Rahul and Jack in a minute. You coming with? Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's loads of benefits to, to doing a track walk. Um, if you don't know the track, then you're, you become more friendly with the track than by just walking it. Um, for me, if I don't know the track, I'll go walk it and I'll walk it every day that I'm there. Just because you, you understand a lot more about the track, especially after every session, you learn more, you learn more. And then to walk it in the evening, you're like, oh, there is a bit more room there. Or if something goes wrong here, that's a big thing for me. When I walk around the track, I, I watch where things could happen. So if I know if I go off here, what the ground's like off the track. So if it's a dry day, then you'll be able to see what the type of the grass would be basically, and if there's any mesh anywhere either, and just some little points like that, and how big the carbs are, and little bits like that. I expect to see a picture of you at some point this weekend. Balls out over there, in smoke fly and everything like you normally do. Definitely. These cameras up this corner. Oh yeah. <laughs> this green yolk should work to our favour because it's got a bit of camber to it. The best one is there, I'll, I'll show you that, because that's a very good banking, so you don't really need to take a curb here. Take it midway and go on to that curb. I, I'll tell you. Yeah. Me too. I do the exact same Finley. But then we could hook it up early enough. We could hook the car up early enough to the curb on the inside and hug it nearly if you carry a lot of speed. Does this break? I think it's like a little dab on the back. Maybe in the car. <laughs> yeah, you bring like my engineer, that'll be a big one for me and any data analyst because the data guy, he'll be able to tell you the quickest way around on the data. And then when you do a track walk, you can make some little changes then to what will actually be the quickest way around or what suits you. You wouldn't need to take this curb at all, just, just stay in this middle part. Really? Yeah. I guarantee you. What about the end of the curb even? If, 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 if you, if you if you try to take the curb, you'll probably slow down because you want to get in. But in my head, it's more like stay on the out, get in the middle, go out. Yeah, you see. Well, what we think about the uh, Yeah, like the exit. Nutrition as well. I struggle to eat on a race weekend just because I've so much going through my mind and this food just isn't really a, something that I'm attracted to, I suppose, on a weekend and it's not something I want to do, is eat. So I, I try to get as many carbs in and the, the right diet leading up to the week so that I'm fully filled for, so I can go out and perform even if, I, if I'm not getting in the right amount of calories or the right type of foods. Which ones? I think you, had, you have them, the yellow ones, yeah. Oh, these ones? Yes. I just had two pieces of toast, so I'm, I'm full now. Here? Put them in your pocket because I Yeah, I'll just get my gear on and then go up to the car and get through. Just get your line and just feel for the car first of all. Yeah, just pass me through if you want me to come in on it. And then on, um, on lap three, I want you to put pole time in, alright? Time. Let's get it up in the air. Yeah. So we're just here for the penultimate round of the TCR UK Championship and uh, we've just been out for our first practice session on Saturday here and uh, I really like the track. I've never been on it before so it's, it's, a, it's a really enjoyable tra track and so picturesque when you're out there. So that first lap was quite nice to just go out and see 
see the, the views, it was nice, and then we kind of got down to the, the nitty gritty stuff. Um, in that session, we, we learned loads. There's a lot, lot happening to the car that we don't really want to happen. Uh, so we're going to make some small changes. And then hopefully in the next session, we'll make loads of progress then, yeah. So if we, if we had to go out now, it's qualifying. I'll be more, if, I, if we had to go out on qualifying, I'd just leave it on the set, but it's on. And what about well, when you first went out? Yeah, it felt session? good, but I didn't get to push it enough. Okay. So would you, 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 what you said, the first change, it reduced rear rotation. Yeah. Second, and then change, second change, it increased the A little bit too much, yeah. A little bit too much. Too much, yeah. It was coming down through that fast so if, we, if we went back to where it was when you first went out... Is that in between it? Yeah. <laughs> Then that that yeah. may, that would work well, I think. Or even if you knocked a bit off it, because I would still like some rear rotation. Because it's it's sort of turning through that fast right hander just over there, and you can feel it. But then coming down through that left hander, it's just too much. Like they so call car side. Does like. the um, what I want though is remember I want that steering. When you move the steering, I want it to turn. To yeah. Turn. Does, it, does it do that? In the fast bits, yeah. But too much. What about slow speed stuff? Uh, no, not corners. really. But it's like go kart track up there. Like you, if you get on power, you just get the understeer because it's so tight. Yeah, I, I think initially it felt good. I, getting the grips with the track, as was my first time there, was an important piece for me. And I think when you're getting out to a track, you always want it to be dry. So we got quite lucky with it being dry. It just helps you dial yourself in. So you, then if it does rain, and as it did in Anglesey, so you know, oh, this is where I normally break. I can dial myself back. Whether you go out in the wet, you're like, oh, this is where I have to break now. I wonder how much later I can break in the dry. Yeah, yeah. So you, you figure little things out like that, but I think that really helped us out that first session, just dialing ourselves in and we were pretty quick straight off the bat. What? Bad. Uh, yeah, the whole front is on in. And it's dead, like no stopping once it goes in. It looks bad anyway. Sorry, lad. <laughs> well, the only really, the only sideways moments I had was turn one. Did you see any of them? I was hoping people would see them. Some of them are good, and then nearly every time through that fast right, it's just twitchy. It's so fun. <laughs> Other than that, it's fine everywhere. Through that back part, you know, after you go up the hill, then there's a left hander and right hander. That right hander the whole way down and around that top one, and then just before you come downhill, that's all fine. It takes three flat now. <laughs> yeah, it's flat when you have a spin halfway through it and then you get back on, it's flat from there on. <laughs> so I think for, for wet conditions you got to you got to dial yourself into your throttle points and your brake points really. So when you're picking up the throttle you gotta be a lot smoother with. We're lucky in the Hyundai we've got a throttle map so basically it changes of how the throttle is applied so that even if you give a full throttle it'll go up smoother until let's say 3000 revs and then it'll give you more and um, so that's important because if you're wheel spinning you're not really getting as, not, enough, as much speed as you could be taking if you weren't wheel spinning and then for the braking points well you really get that's that's a really important one if you brake too late you're going to lock up and you're going to go off uh, or just miss your apex and that's going to cost you time and if you brake too early well you're going to lose time the whole way to the corner so it's a big big thing in the wet is to find where you can, how late you can brake and what's the quickest point to brake because you can brake late and then you'll be too fast in or whatever so you need to kind of, need to find a happy medium of yeah. where's the perfect point. I think some tracks uh, are different to others as in you've got like tracks that will have banked corners and those banked corners obviously the water's going to run down so you don't want to be on the inside let's say because all the water's going to be down there then you're going to have no grip. So there's lots of stuff like that you want when you're driving your first few laps in the wet it'll be really important to, to look for the grip as well as try find it so you want to try like outside lines like off the rubber anything like that you, you got to look for in the wet i think in the wet there's that added pressure as well when you're driving that things can go wrong so that makes it even a little bit more difficult but i think for me i don't really think of any of that stuff and just yeah. try to go as quick as i can yeah, so first we had really nice conditions on the Saturday morning, and that was great. And then we just went to wet and windy, and then it was torrential rain for the last session, like super bad. There was only two cars out on track, myself and another car. And that's just how bad it got. People didn't want to take the risk of anything going wrong. 
Uh, for me, I took it as an advantage as if it's like this tomorrow, I'm going to be good in this condition because I've got some experience in it. But yeah, we had some terrible conditions on the Saturday. And then the Sunday? And on the Sunday, we woke up, we were expecting it to be bad and it was lovely, it was gorgeous. <laughs> Hello and welcome to a very, very blustery Anglesey circuit. It's round 1011 of the Maximum Networks Volkswagen Racing Cup, incorporating the Goodyear Touring Car Trophy and TCR UK. Bruce Winfield is on the pole, Max Hart is second. He could get some amazing points in the bag. He needs to catch up with that pesky Lewis Kent. Oh, do you want to come in? Oh, 120. Simon, go on. Simone. <laughs> uh, for driver's briefing, it basically they welcome everyone to the day and they run through what you need to know about the track, what the limits are, all your, your basic information that you need for the race weekend, along with those little tips that they're going to tell you, like how strict they're going to be or anything like that. And what I take away from it is it just any points that I... I didn't know or any points that I want to know a bit more about or just anything that might be helpful for me throughout my weekend. They always go over driving standards, so no contact. Um, and basically just run through stuff, like just a reminder of everything before we get out on track and to just watch out for little things. Yeah, basically make sure we're not misbehaving and just some safety stuff as well. I'll do a lot of stuff before a race, I'll do some skipping, some visualisation, just getting my head through the track, try to time myself with my eyes closed in a dark spot, see if I can get the lap right in my head, and do loads of things like that, just so I'm ready for it, you know, because you never know really what's going to happen in a race, you need to be at your best, you need to be performing at the top, and you need to be enjoying yourself as well. Before the race starts, you get into your car and you get yourself down to assembly, Assembly, as it says in the name, is where everyone assembles. Yeah, you've got like you've got butterflies in your stomach and things like that. You know, it's it's a weird feeling, but it's a it's a nice feeling as well. It's pleasant and just being able to to get out there and go for it. Green flag waved at the back of the field, and round ten of the Maximum Networks Volkswagen Racing Cup, incorporating the Goodyear Touring Car Trophy and TCR UK gets away with a killer start from Bruce Winfield. You were right in that he was practicing that and he gets ahead of the two Hyundai i30Ms. It's the second of the Coopers of Dan Kirby that slots into four, but already going high and wide is Max Hart to try and back the lead. Not quite there though. No, Max Hart's already got the run on him. This could be for the lead as he gets squeezed onto the grass as they go into church and he had to back out of it but it looks like it's already job done on the first lap for Bruce Winfield. But I tell you what, when Max Hart gets with him again, he won't be impressed with what he did to him on the grass there, and he'll probably try and get back past him in a, in a, uh, a more interesting way. <laughs> He's over defending, can he get underneath him? This is hot in up now. But Bruce missed the apex completely and that was deliberate. So he was then arriving at Rocket way over to the left to make sure that Max Hart couldn't turn in. And now through the final corner at bus stop and across the line, a delighted Bruce Winfield will take victory here at Anglesey in the latest round of the Maximum Networks Volkswagen Racing Cup incorporating the Goodyear Touring Car Trophy and TCR UK. Second position going away of Max Hart which is great for the championship and third place for Dan Kirby. Oh, exactly what we needed was but I did have you down for a win I didn't think it would be that difficult to keep with Bruce to be honest with you. Yeah well of course Exactly as you say, we're closing in on the championship lead and that's exactly what I need to be doing. So it's good points for me and good points for for the championship, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the result of course. I would have wanted P1 and that was my goal at the start to get in front and try to defend. Uh, we went for a little setup change and it didn't really pay off in the race, but we'll learn from that now and hopefully race two will be better. Everything good with the car? Any alarms? There was a lot of grass in the front of your radiator. I called it on the first lap. I was quite concerned, but it's not actually that hot today. Yeah. yeah, I was keeping an eye on all the temperatures, you know. That's what I have to do. Um, 
but no, there was no, no overheating or anything like that. There is a bit of grass, but not too much. And as you say, it's cold enough here that didn't really overheat in there. And happy enough with the result, happy enough with how the car feels. Any more changes now? Yeah, we'll make some changes for race two. Of course, I want the P1, um, but I think P2 is okay for us. I don't know anything that you just said because of your accent. <laughs> Give it to Dan Kirby, I'm joking. Well done, mate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so first race um, was pretty plain and simple. I got a good start and I went to take the lead and unfortunately I got put onto the grass ends and then I was on the back foot kind of from then on trying to just maintain second and thankfully I maintained it the whole way to the end of the race. So that was a not boring race but it was a, an easy race for me. Well done, mate. Well done. Talk to you later. Yeah, go on. No problem. Back live here at Anglesey for the second and final race of the day for the Maximum Network's Volkswagen Racing Cup, incorporating the Goodyear Touring Car Trophy and TCR UK. Cars are already out on the grid and uh, preparing or being prepared by the teams. Weather conditions, well, it was beautifully sunny, what, half an hour or so ago. It's clouded over a little bit since then. But uh, some changes. But that's the order, as we call it, with Bradley Kent and Hugo Cook on the front row. The red lights are on now. And we're about to get the latest round. Round 11 of the Maximum Network's Volkswagen Racing Cup on underway. And a killer start there for Bruce uh, around the outside. And he tried to pick off a number of positions oh, no. in Wingfield. Car straight on, though. Was that Hugo? Hugo Cook straight on. I don't know what went on there, whether he's caught the grass and just had no grip and gone straight. He'll be in the lead. <laughs> Drive down the inside of it, pushes it wide. Winfield would love the look of that. Dirty tyres and contact! Oh, big contact! There's got to be damage on the front left of Kirby's car. Oh, dear me, that's a nightmare. There's definitely got to be contact. That's a big, big hit, wasn't it? That's one of the two high under. Is that Max Hart is the next big question. And if not, then I don't know who it is. Maybe Lewis Kent, but I think it's more likely to be Max. Did he cross the line? Well, well there goes Bruce Winfield. We're now waiting to see. It well, must be. It's the it's only got to be him. Max Hart stricken car. The 101. I wonder what on earth has gone on there. Um, that's unbelievable. Very mysterious retirement for young Irishman Max Hart, sadly. Initially when I got out of the car I was frustrated and then I sat up on the bank then and as I watched my other competitors go by and you have a little cry then because you're kind of watching your championship kind of disappear and it's, it's frustrating and it's just annoying and it's just... It's not a nice feeling, I suppose, because you, you put, I put so much work into this that I want it so bad. And then for something like that to just kind of throw it away and ruin it for me is, is heartbreaking. Fortunately, with a couple of laps to go, then my engine let go after a stone went through the rod and, and everything leaked from it, which was really unfortunate. But I think in racing, these things happen, so you just gotta, gotta move on, you know? Uh, at the end of the day, it's not affecting me too much. Um, We've had to get a new engine, so that's all it is. So the engine will be, be back to the best it's going to be. And just move on from it. The engine's very expensive, isn't it? Yeah, they're expensive, and that's one of the hardest parts about racing. It's so expensive, and it's so tough to find the funding as well. Uh, for me, I solely rely on sponsorship. Uh, my parents have been so good to me throughout my, my since I've started racing, and even continuously, they support me so much. But I need sponsors to keep going forward. So. I've got to keep trying to get them. I've, I've got impression. I think maybe a bit too much oil. Tall boy! Yeah, man. Oh, bad way to end this How did you go? Hell? Yeah, that's how I f***ed up. 
You've done really well, mate. You've done really well. Try to get the budget together to do Darlington and this is like I said, it's an expensive sport and I haven't got money coming from everywhere that I can I can just throw it at the car and get out for the next round. So it's either save and try to do something in Europe or just pack it in for the, this season and maybe focus on something for next season. And then uh, is there anything you want to say goodbye or thank you to anyone? Uh, yeah, definitely. Just massive thank you to all my sponsors throughout the year. Like, literally, I wouldn't be able to get where I am now without them at all. And then, of course, Maximum Motorsport. They've just been fantastic all year. And all the data guys and the guys that have been engineering the car. Big, huge thanks to those guys and Jamsport and Jamsport Media for this weekend as well. Big thanks. It means a lot. Uh, thanks and goodbye, I guess, would be there. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. I, I hope you all enjoy. Yeah. yeah. That's it, mate. Yeah. And then go again. Ha! <laughs> If you win race two, we're jumping in the sea. 100%. If I win two races, we're jumping in the sea. If I win one race, that's it. Yeah, yeah. That was dangerous. On the. <laughs> uh, lip just out the second corner. Happen. Put my foot down, and then nothing happened. Just like, one. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Rev to fuck. Going anywhere. <laughs> uh, seeing Max progress, obviously when we first picked him up in the Cooper, he's a crazy little Irish guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, he, no, he's doing milk with a tea bag, and then the tea bag's out, so it's a milk with a drop of tea. He's such a big lad. He's not a big ball. F he real angry looking. Yeah. He was in WWE as well, sort of with no hair. How was he fighting? He was doing really well behind you. What? He was doing good behind you. You know, there's, there's no exit. Oh, well, I couldn't get it because it wouldn't go there. Well, we can. My mum could drive around there and park on the grass if she wanted to, couldn't you? Yeah! No, no, no.